Hi, my name is Anita Beckham and I'm the Head of Events at Tankstream Labs. Tankstream Labs is a co-working space for tech startups with a global focus. We have three offices across Australia, two in Sydney and one in Perth. These are our Motivational Mondays talks. Right, so we are also testing out technology today. We are trying to go live on Facebook too. So this is going to be interesting. Right. I think we are good to go. James, you ready to kick off? You can't hear me? Okay, hang on one second. Oh, there you go. Anita, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. You can't hear me? Can you hear me now? Hang on. Okay, I can hear you loud and clear. I've just lost the hearing. So um, what I might do is I might keep, I might kick off if, and give me a thumbs up if you're keen for me to do it. Okay. So um, thanks for, for having me. Um, what I thought would be great is just in the next five to eight minutes, give everyone a really quick summary of, I guess, where we got to as a business and then what happened when the world shut down and just a little bit of in, insight into the way that we responded. Um, and then keen to take questions. I think uh, one of the things which I'm really conscious of is that we're all facing the same type of situation. And um, I guess what I've done in the last three, three weeks is reach out to a lot of co-founders and a lot of founders to get an understanding of what they've done to respond. So for those who don't know, Pickstar is the business that I founded with Matthew Pavlich uh, about four or five years ago. We're, we're a business now that's had three rounds of funding, we're, in, we're a marketplace which connects sports stars with commercial opportunities. So um, what we've been able to do is build out our, our two sets of stakeholders. We've got over 1,700 athletes on the platform. Uh, we basically take a 25% commission when someone books them through our, through our website. So we were going fantastically well. Um, we've got teams up to uh, 12 staff. Uh, we'd actually just smashed all our targets and numbers and we'd released our IM. Sorry if there's a, a helicopter over and above. We'd just released our IM uh, on, on, on the Wednesday prior to the NBA shutting down on the Friday. So we were looking at a, at a raise between three and five million dollars. Uh, we've, we've had some traction into the US. So I just wanted to paint a picture of everything was firing. Everything was going great. Obviously, a lot of what we do are connecting talent into physical appearances. And so when you look at it and you go, you're in sport and you're in events, not a great time. And so I woke up on the Saturday after that Wednesday that we released our IM and I go, oh, shit. Uh, the tap had been completely turned off. And our pipeline of opportunities uh, had basically dried up overnight and people suddenly started to ring in to cancel bookings. So as a leader and a founder in this position, um, I found myself in a situation where we had two and a half months of runway. We have 12 staff and potentially looking at a situation where we've got at least six to nine months of zero revenue if we don't change what we do. And, and so as a founder, I, I probably licked my wounds for two days. That day Sunday, I was a bit disbelief and I felt like this situation is a bit surreal and just accepted that that's a pretty realistic human emotion um, felt that things were pretty unfair like we've done everything right we've, we've exceeded our targets and now the cap raise basically is off and um, and you know what what am I supposed to do from here um, so for me on the Monday, I often feel that the hardest thing and yet the most powerful thing you can do as a founder and a leader in these situations is just to confront the big elephant in the room. And so the elephant for me was that, the, that our business had changed significantly overnight. And I didn't want to hide from that. I didn't want to put my head in the sand and pretend that didn't exist. So I got my team together. At this point, we were still all in the office. And I said, guys, here's the four points that now are relevant for our business. 
revenue and revenue growth is off the table. We are a growth business and all of a sudden our main asset being growth is not going to be relevant for us. So what's, what do we have to do over the next two weeks to understand the landscape and the market? So I didn't want to jump to any conclusions. I didn't want to pretend I knew the way that our clients and potential clients were going to react. I said, let's get on the phones and let's just ask questions. Let's call people. Let's build a picture of what is going on. And it's not going to be the, the same today as it is tomorrow. But actual fact, let's spend two weeks just acknowledging that we don't know what the lie of the land looks like and what is it that we have to do to, to change our business. The second thing is, how do we, how do we focus on controllables? Um, as I said, we're not going to get our validation and affirmation based on revenue and bookings. Um, we can't control that. So how do we focus inward, look at our user experience? How do we look at our tech pipeline and roadmap and begin to, to get some of the projects done that we didn't have time or focus to do? So how do we redefine what our momentum is? Um, and I guess the third thing then is, is really um, build our own energy and morale. And, and, and that, that wasn't going to come again from, uh, from, from our external things. Our energy morale was going to come from what we can generate. And then probably the last thing is like, and I said this really early on, how can we just do some good? I was at that point in the first few days, I was receiving emails from people saying, you know, COVID, 30% off, COVID, uh, you know, two for one, COVID. And I was just like, this is shit. I, my world is, is, in, is in turmoil. Don't send me emails trying to sell me. And that was just my own personal feelings at this point. So really what we decided to do was, um, probably about four days later, we're still in this flux of like talking to people. And I was talking to Anthony who heads up um, and is CEO of Tribe. And for those who don't know, Tribe is an influencer marketplace. You might've heard of them. And Anthony's just a wonderful guy. Some of you might already know him, but he and I connected and we were just sharing stories about what are you doing with your staff and how you, you know, strategizing. And, and, and he just had this great energy going on. And I just said to him halfway through the discussion, I was like, you know what the weird thing is? We're all now, by this point, we're all moved virtually. So the team had gone home on the Wednesday. I said, all these new virtual teams around the country are trying to become familiar and getting to learn with what it feels like to do a daily kickoff. And to a degree, it's a bit clunky. And as a leader, you're looking at all these faces at you every morning and they're just sort of blankly staring at you. And it's really hard to get a sense of, are they energized like yeses and noes and nods and you know most of them are on mute so it's really difficult to get a sense of like momentum and and i just said to anthony like imagine if like we've got all these sports stars who are doing nothing now imagine if we could just inject them into all these virtual kickoffs that are happening around the country for no other reason than to provide a bit of distraction and you know create a moment where they go this is kind of a cool start to my day that literally was the premise. And then Anthony's like, hey, trial it with us tomorrow. Like get a talent. I've got a global kickoff of about 60 people. Why don't you just try with us? Um, and so I said, cool. So we got Carolyn Buchanan, who's, who's an amazing story. She's a BMX champion. And I moderated a kickoff with her for 15 minutes for, for Tribe's, um, you know, Tribe's daily uh, uh, huddle. And it was just awesome. And the, the, the staff began to ask some questions. And, and so I just got off that and went, stuff this. You know, where I'm, a, I'm an ex-athlete and I like numbers and projects. And I just, I just literally picked numbers out. I went, imagine doing a thousand, you know, connecting athletes with a thousand virtual teams in a hundred days. And maybe the rationale in the back of mind is like, you know, numbers and selling for us isn't going to be huge over the next couple of months. So I thought, you know, a hundred days, roughly three months. I thought, well, we've got a thousand opportunities, you know, even if we get halfway there, like that's pretty epic, but let's give ourselves the mission. And so that's really where this was born. And it, and it goes to the pivot in our business and how we've responded. And it literally came from how can we do some good? And then what we've, what we've decided is, you know, all of a sudden we have this influx. We've got Adam Gilchrist, Matthew Pavlich, Elise, Tw uh, Elise Perry, Bronte Campbell, Kate Campbell, Duncan Armstrong. I've got all these names of athletes saying, yeah, I'll jump on board. Phil Davis, we've got all the latest NRL guys putting their hands up saying, look, we'll donate 15 minutes. 
And so we've got this influx of business. We've got this influx of talent being engaged. It's not costing us a thing. We're delivering some good positive energy into Australia for free. And by the way, we've now got this workflow problem. We've got over 200 businesses that have responded in less than five days. Um, businesses like, yeah, yeah, businesses like PwC, car sales, Amazon, AWS, Afterpay, like, you know, like KPMG, it's just, it's just gone nuts. But all of a sudden, we're not equipped for this. So we're, as a tech business, we're trying to retrofit this workflow into our model. Um, and that's been really challenging. But the coolest part is like, we've been stressed with work. We've been stressed with uh, like too much on. We're stressed with having to get stuff done. And it's such a better stress than if we were sitting there stressed about what to do. And, you know, idle time, you know, breeds some pretty negative thoughts. And, and so then it began to roll in as a leader of this organization like this is actually really cool you know we're stressed about achieving something and and by the way we're actually creating something that we'd never existed before and so probably just to finish about how my mindset has evolved and then keen and i'm battling to hear you and i've got no idea why so i'll just look at the nods and thumbs and we'll, we'll see if we can work through the um the, the audio problem in a minute but um the coolest part is that we've got to a position now where i and again without being too graphic, I was in the shower mid last week and I'm like, I just realized the limitation I'd placed on the business. Um, and the limitation was, oh, we've got to survive. We need 12 months of cash flow. And then hopefully we can come out of this period with, you know, a dented valuation, but we're, we're, we're still alive. And I thought, nah, that, like, just imagine if I had this mindset of, we're going to create a global product, we're going to increase our valuation. And we're not going to burn any cash doing it. And, and we're actually closer to profitability. Now, that is, that's an extremely positive and optimistic way to look at it. But as founders and as leaders, we always kind of have these positive missions in the back of our mind. And why should now be any different? So it would be interesting for everyone listening to just go, wow, like it sounds kind of corny and it sounds not realistic. But if I did, if I did go to the best ever scenario that could occur from now what would that look like and at least just entertain and live in that world for a little bit because now the possibility for us is we have leaned our operations up we have decreased our fixed expenses we are now acquiring customers albeit they're not paying but we're building relationships with the largest businesses in the country and we're not paying for customer acquisition and hopefully at the end of this we've got a ready-made virtual product and we can own this space with a thousand testimonials or a thousand clients under our belt so that's just me spewing a heap of stuff up um, uh, the last part of this is probably how I've engaged my investors through this period and it's something I'm really proud of but um, you know we went and I had a series of investor meetings last week um, that whereby I just took them through my mindset and where we're at and I confronted the reality with them. I, ho I held three virtual meetings and, and I allowed them all to dial in and ask questions and I said, here's the brutal reality of where we're at. Where we're at. Here's what we're going to do to survive over the next couple of weeks. But we're not surviving to just sit idle. We're going to survive to thrive. So how do we as a business thrive through that? And here's our initial strategy and here's our starting point. And the response from them has been just, just brilliant. So in terms of managing stakeholders as a leader, you've obviously got your team morale. You've, we had some very difficult conversations about wage reduction and, and you know, efficiencies with, with personnel on Friday. So you've got the morale and the energy, clarity and the purpose. You've got your stake, you know, your, your investors. Um, and you've also got how as a business do you keep the lights on? And I'm doing all that from my egg chair. Um, so <laughs> what an incredible case study of how, you know, of a shit storm that will never, ever exist again in our lifetime. And I don't say that because this is awesome. Um, it's pretty crappy. And if I'd rather it didn't happen. Um, but, you know, I, I, I hope, hopefully that's an insight into the way that, you know, we've sort of responded to the challenge and, and what we're doing. Yep. That's fantastic. So can you hear me now? We just, for those who are um, they're just tuning in, we're just trying to, we've had a little bit of technical glitch where um, James can't actually hear me. 
So he's been talking and I've been listening and uh, um, we're just, we're going to work this out. I might just send him messages and things like that as well. So we'll go from that. Um, so for those, one second, I'm just going to tell James, I'm just talking. We'll let you know when to chime in. <laughs> Good stuff for technology, right? So for those, um, so just to get a recap of what um, James was saying, he confronted the elephant in the room about the significant changes of the business practically overnight. Um, and, you know, revenue, it was a growth company and then now it's no longer going to be relevant. So how did, what's going to happen now? And he's saying that his actions over the next two weeks, he sat down with his team and just asked questions and acknowledge what, uh, what is actually going to change. Um, so, you know, he focused on, how do you focus on controllables? Um, he was working on the user experience, uh, tech pipeline and roadmap. So working on that, what they can work on now, and also redefining his momentum and building own energy and morale um, between his team. And I guess a big part of that is also how does he do some good? So this is part of the collaboration and partnership between Tankstream Labs um, and Pixstar where you know this you can see very clearly that Pixar has adapted to the current situation now with its goal of a thousand in a hundred days which is fantastic and we're so glad to be a part of this initiative as well and I think that um, we picked up on the conversation with James is investors um, you know keeping them in the loop communicating with them what strategies are and keeping them confident in the company in your company I think that is a really really good um, really good strategy as well so now I'm about to, James is just getting some power into his laptop. I know I see there is a Q&A uh, section um, in this Zoom call as well. So if you do have any questions, please type them through. I can see one from Brad and we will get to that um, very shortly as well, Brad. So now I just sent a question over to James. Um, how do you keep motivated and how do you build your energy and morale in these times? Over to you, James. Do you want me to answer this question now? Yes, please. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so look, sorry guys, I know what's going on with the audio. Um, how do I keep motivated? How do you build your energy and morale? Um, brilliant point. And I, I, you know, the one thing to acknowledge is that we're not robots and it really does fluctuate. I had a really low day last Monday. And I think the first thing is how do you keep motivated is to be really, is to be really kind to yourself when it actually dips and just accept that motivation is going to come and go and I knew I was running on adrenaline for, for, for two weeks um, so that that personal awareness and I said to a few people and I don't want to sound too morbid but you know I've found that when someone close to you dies there's an adrenaline and a, and a momentum when that person dies where you, you're really up and there's funerals and there's you know lots of communication with lots of people and then and then you just hit a flat spot and so the first thing that I accepted when I hit my not motivated time was to just be kind and just go yep this is a bare minimum moment and i'm not going to fight it this is my body and my motivation telling me something you know you see gary v's of the world and it's like hustle 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 it's up 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 and that's great and i, and I think he's even said though that that you need you need to have the things that give you your manage energy back so for me then what i did is i actually um i meditate just personally that works really well for me um, and I've got this six minute uh, meditation, which is great. I've also learned that, you know, that the separation from work to my home life in the evenings has been really crap. And, and there's no decompression from 5.30 into then dinner and especially with kids running around and you're in the same house. And so what I'm doing now is I actually separate from the house and I, and I do my walk as a, as, a, as, a, as a finish of that work chapter moving into my, my home life. Um, the, 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 the third thing is that in terms of morale, I've got a leadership group. I've got two guys in my team who I'm really open and honest with, and I find that helps me with my own morale. Cause I think it's a balance as a leader about providing the energy and the, the stoicism, but then with a few select people in your team, you kind of got to go, oh, I'm just feeling flat today and, and accepting a bit of their energy. And I, and I just sent that. So last Monday, I just sent them a message and said, guys, I'm, I've run out of puff today and they just pump me up, you know, and I'd spent the last two weeks pumping them up, you know, saying it's going to be okay. We're going to be great. So 
you know, it's, it's, it's a humbling thing to do as a leader is to accept that you're not always going to have high morale and great energy. And it, and it actually takes a little bit of vulnerability to flag with a few other people to say, I'm feeling a bit down, but then you open yourself up to receive what they can give you, which I found is really important. Yep. Fantastic. Great. Um, so we've also got a question from Q&A. So Brad has asked, has your background as a professional athlete helped you deal with the challenges of leading a business? Wow. Yeah. I mean, when it's, it's, it's what I know, it's kind of part of my DNA now. Um, and I have been in a very fortunate situation. It's why I do love athletes participating in, in businesses kickoff meetings because they've come from a world of dealing with complete unknown and uncertainty. And so the first um, benefit of being a, a, an athlete um, is that you know that any day you could just blow an knee out and there your year is, is completely different from what you were predicting. And so you think about business and what's going on in the world of COVID to some degree for us as athletes, this is just like blowing your knee out. It's like, okay, now I'm going into rehab. It's a different sort of effort. It's a different sort of recovery. It's a different sort of um, focus and mindset, but the objective is still the same. It's we've got to have a purpose and we've got to, we've got to achieve things. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that um, understanding the collective has been really powerful. So as a team member, I think you really do believe that the sum of the parts is greater than any individual and you've been witness to that. And so the first thing, as I mentioned, that I did in this situation is not believe that I've got the answers. And I started to reach out to some, co you know, to a cohort of founders um, because in, a, in, in adversity, uh, you know, being a part of something is so much more um, comforting. And so the feeling of being a part of the sort of founding team has been, has been really great. And then the last thing is, I think, just the acknowledgement that your body has such a huge effect on your mind. And there's no point sitting here, which I did do for a week and a half, eating Tim Tams and feeling fat and <laughs> lethargic and sloppy and gross. And I knew that part of, part of what you have to do is to get your mind right. You have to move. And, you, you know, that's a bit of a mechanism by which you, you change your mindset. So I think there are three obvious things. There's probably more, but probably a pretty good summary. Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic answer. Um, and, you know, like as James had alluded to, um, making sure that you do keep your uh, physical and mental health well-being on, um, on check as well. So at Tangstream Labs, this Motivational Mondays talk is actually part of our Motivational Mondays um, program with Tankstream Labs. So we do have online meditation at 9 a.m. every Monday open to all as well as part of this initiative. So join us every Monday at 9 o'clock for meditation and 12 o'clock for motivational talks like today. Uh, for more information, go to our website at tankstreamlabs.com. Um, so I'm just going to pose a final question to James. I'm just going to ask him, does he have any last words and advice before we round up today's session? And for those who just tuned in, um, we're having audio problems. So James can't hear me, and, but I can hear him. So we've been communicating over messages and so far we're going pretty well. So now over to you, James. Uh, thanks, Anita. And look, any last words of advice? Um, wow. Uh, reach out to people, ask questions, be curious. Um, and, and be ready to adapt and, and move into, into areas that you never thought you'd have to um, and, and, and kind of confront and embrace those um, challenges. Uh, I'm sitting here and I can't hear anything from Anita, but we've amazingly managed to get to a situation <laughs> where we've actually had an interview with no audio. Yeah. And this is a great example. Like, let's have a laugh about it. Um, let's yep. see if we can get a great result. And, um, and find hacky solutions to, to do something pretty awesome. So, no, nah, look, um, and, and feel free to reach out to me at any point um, in the next journey uh, if, if, if you think that I can learn from you or you can learn from me. But thanks, guys, and thanks to Brad also. I love Brad. Brad's, um, Brad's one of those genuine people uh, that has, you know, been a part of our world for the last few years, and, and, uh, and so thanks for making this happen. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time, James. And uh, we'll see everyone next week for the next session of Motivational Monday Talks. Thanks. Bye, James. <laughs>